The end of normal facial editing is here. Well, not really. This is a cool trick that, you know, maybe you can use it if you are not feeling like normal editing the face of your character. So the principle is very simple. Every time your character uh, twirls or twists the head, it will automatically create these shadows. So we are going to create a shadow map, a long shadow map that we're going to offset. So this way, you don't have to worry about editing any normals at all on any character surface or, or any character facial surface for that matter. And your vocal blend shapes will, will work accordingly. They will never deform. And this is, you know, very uh, Blender, Unity, Unreal game engine friendly. So here's the principle. We're going to start on the left side of the face. As you can see, this is a long map. This is a 512 by um, 512 uh, facial map that we're going to offset to each of these uh, blue and gray and black positions. This is just so that you can see where the map is actually being offset it to. So to the right side, we have black and gray. And to the left side, we have uh, the other colors. So the principle is very simple, as I mentioned before. All we're going to do is to, to art direct paint a texture map that we're going to be offsetting every time that the head moves or twists in the Y axis. Now, you already know the light threshold, right? So whenever we activate a map in the light threshold, that is going to limit or kind of, we can say, combine the shadows wherever we paint them, plus the real world calculation shadows that it's receiving from the light. And so it works like that. And I'm going to do this by hand at this moment so that you can see it. We're going to offset this to the negative side and then I will arrive to my half of the face, face um, dark mask in this case. And since we have a full blown light face, we also need to create a full blown black shadow face area. But for now, let's just concentrate in that we have not edited any normals, as you can see, that's why I'm showing you this. Uh, this is just the character as it is, although it helps to, you know, model a very flat face for this character, for this anime character. Okay, so let's go with the principle. Again, you can do this in any way you want, and, and this is the most effective, cost-effective way, time-effective way to, to do this kind of stuff. So, again, I'm going back to my light. I'm moving my light right now because I totally removed the light threshold from the shaders. I don't want my light to direct my shadows. I only want the map to do this. So I'm just showing you that right now they are both combined. It is receiving light plus it's limiting my shadows on the areas that I told it to. So it's combining both methods. And as you can see, it also reacts. So if you, if you have a very uh, special case, you can normal edit your face and then you can also add this uh, refining method if we can say it that way. So here's a Photoshop file. Let me just switch everything off. So, so let's start from the beginning. As you can see, we have different shape colors and this is just to demonstrate that on top of them, we're going to overlay the UV layout of the face. This is important because you need to do this on 512 by 512. It's really easy. I mean, you don't even need more resolution than that for shadows. And as I mentioned before, I'm just doing the 3 fourths and the middle of the face. We are still missing the one full blackness face, but that is going to be for another video. So let me just group this so that we can get this all together. I'm going to combine these two things and then control T, flip them over, and that's it. You really need to do just three shapes, three paintings, three uh, designs for the shadows. And this is important because you can actually really design shadows now. You don't care about what the light is doing because you're going to totally art direct your shadows. As you can see, I, I clearly made uh, some little details here and there for the light. So I'm going to save this map and I'm going to call it shadow map for easy identification. We're going to go back into Blender. And once I'm there, let me just refresh this so that you can see the entire thing. Don't forget to be in the UV editor or the image editor. I just click here to refresh the file 
And now let's test this. I'm going to move this left and right by the by offsetting the location of X in the coordinate node. So as you can see, yes, it's there. But we have a problem. We don't want it to slide. We want it to snap. Okay. So again, I'm moving the light so that you can see that it can combine the light plus your shadow map. And that's like something up to you. If you really want to, you know, get the uh, ambience of the the 3D environment or get the light from the 3D environment and combine it with this shadow method, it's all up to you. So again, I'm just calculating here again, just to show you that the middle of the face is right there on 0.4 to the right. Okay, so we're going to take our calculator and we're going to divide 100 divided by five faces that we have. So every 20 spaces or every 0.2, we're going to get the new face. And that's it. There is nothing else to calculate. Now, of course, you see this offset it because as I mentioned before, it's also calculating the light that it's actually being um, calculated by the light threshold. So what we want to do is to connect, to bypass, to, you know, leave alone the light threshold and let, let just Blender take our shadow map and then it will, you know, com compute it or painted <laughs> directly there. We don't need to calculate the light. That's why I always tell you, do not calculate the environment light. Anyways, this is a simple case so that we don't get messed up. Whenever I'm twisting to the left by 15 degrees, I'm going to automatically jump to um, square number eight, square letter A, I'm sorry. Right by 15 degrees, then I'm going to jump to square C. Okay, so again, I'm going to do this just so that you don't understand the basic principle. It will do well that you also explore this um, this file. I'm going to also add it here into the file so that you can explore it on your own, explore the driver, explore the expression, and so that you can modify it. We have three cases, three squares right here. And that's why our expression, which is um, driving, dry, driven, sorry, by the rotation of the bone, it's also going to be multiplied times 0.33 because because there are 33 because because there are three um, spaces 512 by 512. Okay, so that's why we use 0.33. Don't worry if this sounds complex. Um, I'm always here, just right on the Patreon line down there, and you can reach me. So. Here you can see that I'm targeting the bone with a quaternion rotation in local space. So this is important that you remember because all of we, all of that we're going to do, it's going to be related into that. So as you can see, it's just a scripted expression, not really difficult. I mean, you can scale this thing with much efficiency that I, I am doing here. I'm doing this as most basic as I can. All right, so I have this head bone. I know how it's called. And now we're going to use that name to drive the parameter here. So right position of the coordinate node. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to set the parameters to rotate in the Y rotation using uh, the bone, which is being driven from the rig, by the way. And inside the rig, we have the head bone. From there, we're going to switch to quaternion and then to local space. Super easy, nothing complex. And all of that we targeted, it's going to be stored in the name VAR, VAR, okay? So that bone rig, uh, the way it rotates, everything is going to be stored inside the VAR variable, okay? so. That's, that's what it means. So now we're going to take the, the driver or the, the formula for this thing. And now we're going to test it out. We just copied it from the other uh, place. But this time we have five faces. So we need to divide one divided by five or 100 divided by five, which in this case will be, will be 20. Super easy. Now let me switch views so that you can see how this thing is working. Again, this is Elementor he Hero Burst Dynatrix. I didn't want to create her just because, but it happened so that um, I propose to all of you Patreons, if you were interested in placing one of the 3D models 
you will create inside Master Duel. No one answered anything, but I'm going to try it anyways on my own side. So if you're interested, let me know. So here we see that if we rotate the face every 15 degrees, then the shadow offsets. And it kind of looks directly as if it was receiving the light. If you wouldn't know the trick that we're using right now, you would tell, uh, you know, it's a real light calculation, but it's not. It's just a uh, texture offset to drive the shadow. And that is what we're using. That is why it is the end of no facial normal editing. Just imagine that. You don't have to edit or deal anymore with those kind of things if you don't like that of course if you're in my channel and you've been watching this for three years now um, you will know how to easily manipulate facial normal editing but just in case that you're a new subscriber or a new supporter here in patreon and you don't like uh, normal facial editing then you can use this method all right let's finish this shader three and let's unplug the light threshold we're not going to use it we're not going to calculate the light we're going to bypass it and we're going to directly use our shadow map to drive the shadow effect or the shadow offset let's call it that way the shadow offset so let me just connect it back to the emission shader and that is going to be connected to the material and here we see um, elemental hero bursting atrix with her own shadow let's go to pose mode and let's rotate her head and as we can see <laughs> we're still having the old map connected um well, it's actually not the old map, it's the only map the face has, only that I made, you know, those different colors so that you can um, make uh, differences in the areas that we were going to use, either the left side or the right side for the shadows. But this is really easy to solve. We're going to create another, a secondary coordinate node, and we're going to leave them. So that way, the face will never change, the texture map will never change. The only thing that will change is the shadow map. And that one is going to have the coordinate node that has the driver. All right, let's go. Let me just open this up. I'm going to create a uh, another mapping. Sorry, I'm, I'm, uh, let me just show you before that uh, how I organize this Photoshop file so that when you're opening it, you know what it's doing. So Here we go. I'm going to. Here we go. I'm going to open this, and this is the only position that we are interested in. So, we are not going to offset all of the other positions. We don't need to do that. So we're going to leave this face all alone. And what we're going to do, as I mentioned before, is to come here and create another mapping node. That mapping node is never going to change. It's never going to move. It's never going to do anything because that already holds our UV map for the face. And by the way, the face has a different UV map than the body and also has a different material than the body, just so that you know whenever you open the file. So here we go, it's done. So now we, when we rotate the, the head, sorry, uh, that is going to also show the shadow map. Look at that. And since we have only two positions for the shadow, we can see that Rembrandt triangle that is so much sought. <laughs> But we also need to add a sixth uh, position in here, which is going to be the full shadow face. And that is when we reach past beyond the 45, or sorry, the 60 degree angle uh, away from the light. Not really away from the light because right now we're not calculating the light, but whenever she rotates. Another thing I would like to recommend is that you don't forget to go to your asset editor and in the asset editor, create a new collection in the local file and from there, create a new asset pose. Whenever you create that, you have the option to change the thumbnail. So you can click here and look for a file to, you know, use as a thumbnail. So right now I'm going to copy Elemental here, reverse in Atrix, 128 by 128. Make sure that this is in 72 of resolution in the Photoshop file. I'm going to Control V, um, my render. In this case, uh, it's a transparency, transparent, sorry, uh, render. 128 by 128 pixels. I'm going to scale this, place it right here, like so, enter, and save it. And after I save this, I'm going to retarget that so that I can use this on the asset browser because right now uh, we don't have uh, a position to place it we have an asset shelf okay and that asset shelf it's important because it allows you to um, call the pose directly 
from your viewport. You don't have to open the, the asset browser again. But just in case so that you don't forget, go to the post mode and then go to the view and click on asset shelf. That will bring this little asset thing and then you can work from your viewport. Just click right there and then you will get, you always get this pose or the character. This is amazing. And also don't forget that bone collections have changed right now. This is um, just to show you where the hide and show collections for the bones are so that you can hide and show the hair, the bones. In this case, I rigged this, uh, <laughs> but I forgot to attach it to, to the leg. So that's why it's doing this weird thing, but you can accommodate it. You can manipulate it and position it wherever you need so that Bursting Atrix, it's showing her knee pads in the correct position. This picture right here was the actual inspiration for that. And this has been everything I wanted to show you. And this is how you will end your normal facial editing forever. Check that out. It's just amazing. And now you can do this for any kind of character. So now that the good news is that you can do this for robots, for cyborgs, or for really difficult facial characters that do not, you know, um, have to be uh, contained or limited by the facial topology that you will have because this is totally art directed. And you can add even more shadows from other parameters as well. So this is very artistically driven. And yes, that's it. I haven't been able to post many videos because I was working on NDA projects, but thank you so much for your support. Your support make all of this possible. So thank you so much for being patient and I hope to see you in the next video. As always, my name is Peter Schiller. I am a 3D animator and VFX compositor with over 20 years of experience. And let me ask you something. Have you tried Blender? Try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond artistry compatible. And don't forget, if you have any kind of questions about this file, you can let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much.